Cape Canaveral, Florida, Man in Space. In the nose capsule atop the giant booster is a man on the threshold of a new challenge, waiting for the blast off that will send him in an orbital flight through space. He is not alone. He is all of us in our relentless search for knowledge in the unknown of space. We wait and we watch. in the history of man, Moonport, USA, Moonport of the free world. From here, man of the Western world will depart on his greatest adventure, a trip to the moon. This cape on Florida's Atlantic coast is so well suited for its role in the space age, it is almost as though it had been destined through the centuries just for this moment in history. It juts out into the ocean like a gigantic launching pad surrounded by water. It is isolated and secure, yet the spectacular firings can be watched from safe distances. Free and open to Floridians, their millions of visitors, and the whole world. Downrange it goes, passing over a string of islands 5,000 miles long, composing a geographic pattern ideal for tracking missiles. The Cape is a huge laboratory where boosters can be safely fired and their performances minutely followed for long distance. This laboratory, officially the Air Force Missile Test Center, is run by the Air Force in support of the Army, the Navy, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The complicated birds are carefully checked and prepared for flight. Each of the intricate systems is checked out, all systems A-OK. -okay. Now the performance of each system is carefully recorded. Extraordinary cameras catch the action on film radar watches with electronic eyes, telemetry, a method by which small sensors in the space vehicle send back weak signals to electronic ears, passes detailed information to the recorders. The data is processed for evaluation by scientists and technicians. All launchings, all firings are not successful.
However, the collection of data during malfunction is even more valuable. Each launch yields knowledge. None is just a multi-million dollar failure. Actually, what goes up, the boosters and missiles are but a small portion of the expenditure. It takes people to make all systems go. And people mean salaries and buying power. Over 26,000 people are employed at the Cape, directly engaged in the missile and space programs. Thousands more are indirectly engaged. Families more than double the number. Still, many more thousands are needed to provide the services and goods that space workers and their families need. This means a rich and expanding consumer market. Brevard County, site of Cape Canaveral, is the fastest growing county in the United States, more than tripling in 10 years. But the Cape area is more than missiles and the space program. It is still a delightful place to live or to vacation. The space birds are just an added attraction. Fishing has always been excellent in the Indian River country, whether in the ocean or on the river. Whether the fisherman is a tourist or space scientist, the thrill is the same. All water sports are popular in the area. The Indian River, protected by the long barrier cape, is perfect for safe, sheltered boating. From one of man's oldest modes of transportation to his newest is but a step here where the impact of space has marked almost everything. New buildings in every category, such as hospitals, schools, like Satellite High School, churches of many denominations have been built by growing congregations in the very shadow of space age installations. There's the invigorating growing quality of a frontier, but a wholly new kind of frontier, sophisticated, scientific. Its people are young, vigorous, and well-educated. In fact, the greatest concentration of doctoral degrees in the country is found at the Cape. The caliber of personnel for companies like these creates an impact far greater than their number. The space scientists have been responsible for founding an engineering college close by the Cape. Universities throughout the state have stepped up programs to train young people for space and related work. Off-campus courses in technical subjects are made available to space industry scientists through the Institute for Continuing Studies, which has university status. Enrollment in technical colleges at the universities has increased as opportunities for technical employment in Florida have increased. The Engineering and Industrial Experiment Station at the University of Florida does research for Florida industries, including those in the space field. Among many space-related studies at the Florida State University's Institute of Space Bioscience is one on living cells sent into space and recovered for scientific observation. The impact of space extends far beyond the Cape area. It has been felt throughout Florida. Pratt Whitney, near West Palm Beach, is a major facility. Nearby is the free world's largest liquid hydrogen plant, built and operated by air products and chemicals for the Air Force. Florida's largest industrial employer is Martin of Orlando, employing more than 10,000 skilled workers. Plants this size create their own impact by stimulating the establishment of feeder companies. Over 800 smaller Florida businesses supply Martin with everything from components of missiles to services for employees. Industries contributing to the space effort are located from Pensacola to Miami, turning out a variety of sophisticated electronic devices scarcely dreamed of a few short years ago, tracking devices to trace and record missile behavior, guidance system components for celestial navigation, recorders, computers, tubes, and thousands of other electronic parts. Small companies employing a handful, 
branch plants employing several thousand, all part of a growing space age technology in the Sunshine State. Because of the nature of their products, these plants are attractive additions to the Florida scene and their highly trained skilled personnel are attractive additions to Florida's population. They earn good salaries, build substantial homes, and raise intelligent young Floridians. New Floridians have created a rapidly growing consumer market, graphically illustrated by the growth in retail food outlets. The number of Winn-Dixie stores in Florida more than doubled between the first launch at Cape Canaveral and the Mercury orbits. Similar growth has been experienced by Publix and other chains. These stores are usually basic to the development of sprawling shopping centers. There has been an extensive cultural impact because of the educational level among space-related personnel. New orchestras have been founded and older ones strengthened. Florida has more community theaters per capita than any other state. There has also been significant growth in public libraries, their facilities, and their use. Although Cape Canaveral and the Atlantic Missile Test Range make most of the headlines, it is not the only missile test range in Florida. The Air Proving Ground Center at Eglin Air Force Base in the Florida Panhandle operates the Eglin Gulf Test Range that includes tracking stations along the length of the Florida Gulf Coast. Tactical missile systems such as the Bowmark are tested at the operational level. At the western tip of the Florida Panhandle is the Annapolis of the Air Pensacola Naval Air Station and the Space Related School of Aviation Medicine. Unusual equipment at the disorientation center causes the fledgling astronauts to experience the stresses, strains, and disturbed equilibria of space travel, known as vertigo. The school's work in space programs began long ago. Baker, the astro monkey that journeyed to the edge of space, was trained and still lives in the school's animal laboratory. Impressive as it is, the impact of space on Florida is actually just beginning. The expansions of CAPE facilities to accommodate new programs will require seven times as much land for the Missile Test Center. And on the land will be built facilities of such tremendous size and complexity as to stagger the imagination. Sections of the advanced Saturn will be brought to the CAPE on huge barges and then assembled erect in a building over 500 feet high on special mobile gantries. Then doors as tall as a 45-story building will open and the assembled boosters will move to the launching sites. Advanced Saturn and other programs will require additional thousands of workers, first to build and then to operate the facilities. New industrial plants will rise to furnish the boosters, the components, the goods, and the services, swelling jobs related to space probes by many more thousands. All these people working toward that historic day, soon, before the end of this decade, when a giant booster generating millions of pounds of thrust will thunder from Florida's coast, carrying the banner of the United States and the hopes of free peoples everywhere to the moon and beyond.